Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Paddocks. Today, we have something very exciting to bring you. We have Jessica Edgar joining us. Now, you may have heard of her. She's in the F1 Academy. She does drive for Rodent, and she just had a race this weekend. So we got some fun stuff to talk about. And we're just going to go in and kind of have a little bit of an icebreaker. So we're going to just go around and briefly introduce ourselves. So I'll just go ahead and kick us off. My name's Hannah. Fun fact, I live in Texas and I love motorcycles. All right. And I'll, I'll go next. <laughs> I'm Leanne. I, I live over in Maryland and I, what's my fun fact? I, I work in reality TV. <laughs> I'm Chelsea. I work in marketing, which is really fun. I do all the graphics. And my fun fact is, hmm, I went to the Miami Grand Prix recently. So that was really fun. That was my first Grand Prix and seeing like Formula One racing in person. Really cool. I am Rachel. I also live in Texas. And if you see two cats running around, those are my babies. It's Crouton and Clover. Yeah. And my name's Ido. And I guess my fun fact would be that I basically came out of the womb and started watching motorsports right away. I'm Jess. Um, I'm from England. And my fun fact would be that I do horse riding as well as racing in my when I have time. That's cool. I love that so much. (laughs) Yeah. How do you get into (laughs) horse race, like horse riding? Um, well, when I was, I actually started doing that before I started racing. My cousin does it as well. So, yeah, I'm not really sure how I got into it. My dad just, my mum and dad got me a horse for Christmas when I was two. And I did it since I stopped a couple of years ago for racing. But, mm-hmm. yeah. I love that. <laughs> oh, my God. I want a horse so bad. Does your horse have a name? Like, do we, can we know the name? My horse I had when I was like really little was called Red because it was it was a ginger horse. So Aww. we called him Red. So cute. I just remember Big Red from like Secretariat. <laughs> oh yeah. That's just what I always like reference it as. Does your family also do horseback riding besides your cousin? Or was it just you and them? It was just me and my cousin that did it. Um, my other cousin that races in F3, he doesn't like horses. <laughs> I read that you had a cousin in F3. Do you guys ever like think about racing each other sometimes or is that not allowed? Uh, we did race each other like when we were like, he would be nine and I would be eight. Um, we raced each other then, but we haven't raced each other again since then. Mm. That's so fun. You know, I know you had a question on just entering the single seater world. Did you want to bring that up? Yeah, of course. Based on my research, your like whole family is into karting and stuff, but you're the first one next to your cousin that went into single seater. Why did you decide on single seater instead of, I don't know, endurance or whatever? Um, I think the main reason I went to single seaters last year was when W Series was still around um, from maybe like 2017, 2018. That was kind of my goal when it came about and I thought that would be a good place to go to and see what comes from there sort of thing. And um, then unfortunately, W Series is no longer and F1 Academy came about. Um, so yeah, F1 Academy is a good opportunity for us. Just I think it will work out maybe better than W Series did. So it'll be good. Fingers crossed. We all yeah, have yeah. our fingers yeah. and toes crossed <laughs> for you girls. Trust us. I will say it's been really cool following the F1 Academy on social media because all of us mm-hmm. follow it. And mm-hmm. I mean, as a girl who mm-hmm. is not on the track, I just love pretending that I could be in F1 Academy because I will not <laughs> get there. But it is such a sweet dream. <laughs> yeah living vicariously through y'all yeah <laughs> and also yeah. get to a race get to a race to watch girls would be i would love to see us yeah. Academy yeah. on the track yeah. yeah yeah one day i mean they're coming yeah. to austin so i know i'm so excited oh that's right are you gonna be at Co- you're gonna be at coda with rodin right yeah have you been like oh, I love to it. texas in general before uh, no, I've never been to America. I, I always wanted to go to Disney in Florida, <laughs> but I've not been yet. <laughs> Just a few warning. hour flight from Texas. Yeah. Fair warning, Texas is pretty hot. 
even it, in it October, is. it it's hot. But make sure to get your cowgirl boots, your cowgirl hat, and you'll fit right oh, in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go line dancing. Oh Great. my god. <laughs> I'll teach you. Let's go. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I'm going to guess you've never been line dancing, Jess. <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you know what line dancing is? No. Oh, my God. Perfect. Even better. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> and I mean, F1 Academy is kind of going all over, you know, Europe and the world this year because you yeah. guys are going to be on so many different circuits. Are there any races you're really excited about or did your favorite race already pass? Um, I was looking forward to Red Bull Ring and Zamvar, um, and definitely Austin because I always wanted to go to America. So I'm looking forward to that one. If you want any recommendations of like things to sightsee in Austin, let us know. Rachel and I can gladly give you some pointers of just sightseeing and different food places to try. For sure. I currently am living in Austin, so... We're going out a week early to just for the time difference. So go yeah. and look around. Do you guys have any plans yet? Or are you just going to be coming in early? We just come in the weekend before just because it's like five hours time difference. Um, oh, that's true. And just have a look around, see what there is. Weekend two of ACL. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, ACL. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, man. Music. I am serious. Because you guys yeah. travel so much. How do you stay up with all the regimes that you need to do, like the exercising and the eating like certain things right and keeping your weight? It's not a big hassle when you're like constantly moving. Um, I think key for my weight is I don't really have to worry about that, to be honest. I literally never put any weight on. Um, I think when you're at home, it's easy to go to the gym. I go to the gym every day when I'm at home, but when it's away, it gets a bit harder to go to the gym. Sometimes the hotels might have gyms in, but usually we're busy racing when we're out there anyway. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Question How does it feel? I know that you were the very first F1 Academy girl to sign for 2023. How did it feel like being the first one to be like invited and signed in with Roden? Um, it was exciting. I didn't think that, I, well, I Carlin was the team that I really wanted to go with, um, being English. Um, and I think I was really happy when they signed me because I didn't really want to be, I'd prefer to be with them than the other teams this year. Um, just being my first year and working with English people, I think would make it a lot easier. So I was really happy when I got signed for them. When you sign with them, is it usually like a one-year contract? Is that is that just kind of like an extension for how many years? How does that um, work? It's just the one-year contract. And then next year, it all gets, you I'll either get signed again or go somewhere else or whatever. But it's normally just one year. Interesting. And how are you I, liking being on the team, like with the other girls? Um, yeah, I think it's a really good team. We all get on really well. The whole Carlin's a very professional team with a lot of experience. So they're very good at everything they do. Like they're very professional. Everything always works out right. Um, yeah, they're really good and I love being with them. I was just going to say they're a very prestigious team from all the research that I that I looked into. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, because they were your spotlight for our F1 Academy episode. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You delved into them. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and I really want to know, like, what motivates you to just like, keep pushing to your goals? Like, even this past race, you had a couple setbacks during it, but like, what kept motivating you to just go keep going and try even like more and more? I think because I want to make a career out of motorsport. Um, it's all I've ever done in my life. So I'm kind of used to the setbacks as well. So I, find it a bit easier to like get on with them now um and because I want it as a career then I kind of just have to get on with things when it doesn't quite go my way nice and do you have someone who motivates you or keeps you motivated outside of just the wanting to do better in the sport like does your family keep motivating you or how do you find your muse 
Um, yeah, I think my family's really supportive. They are always like proud of me, happy, and they're always watching me. Um, I think, to be honest, I kind of keep myself motivated. I think because I've been involved in motorsport for so long, I don't really get too set back by like the bad things that happen now. Mm -hmm. um, and I just get on with them. I think that's a great mindset to have in motorsport. Absolutely. Or really any sport. I, I feel like I need it in my day-to-day -day yeah. life. That's yeah. fair. Yeah. <laughs> Does your I family mean, get to join the trips or anything for some of the races? My fam, my mum, well, either my mum or dad comes with me to every race because my little brother, he's still in karting. So he's racing every weekend. So either my mum or dad comes with me and the other one goes with him. Um, but mm -hmm. For Paul Ricard, everyone's coming to watch me, so that'll be good. That oh, sounds like so nice. Fun. Oh my gosh. That sounds exciting. Um, I mean, you mentioned Paul Ricard, and we all know it as a very famous track. In your career, did you ever, like as a preparation, did you go to all the tracks preseason, or are you literally just every weekend that you race, go to the track, and that's like the first time you see it? Um, for Monza, I did a, a one-day test um, in a Spanish F4 car, which was like part of my test days before the season started to get me used to the car and everything. Um, and then for F1 Academy, we did the official test days at Paul Ricard and Barcelona. So when I went to Barcelona and when I go to Paul Ricard, I've already seen them before. Red Bull Ring was my first time seeing that track. Austin will be we do have an official test before that but the official test will be my first time seeing the track and then Zamvort the free practice was my first time seeing the track so there's a few that have been my first time seeing it but mm -hmm. I go for a sim day so I've already learned the track on the sim but it is a little bit different in real life. So speaking of race weekends and race days is there any kind of like specific prep that goes into leading up to a race weekend, do you have anything specific that you change or do leading up? Leading up to a race weekend, I go down to Carlin for a sim day. Um, this is where I work with my engineer there um, on the sim and learn the track. Well, usually I've already learned the track on my own sim at home, but I learn the track and it's just kind of like driving in real life. He has the data and like an onboard camera as well that, so we can improve there. Um, it is a little bit different to real life but it's as close as it could be so that's really helpful um, and I do gym work as well and I do want to ask I know you've only been on the F1 Academy for a bit but have you had like any interaction with other drivers off F1 Academy like maybe F2 I know your cousin's in F3 any F1 I'm always curious if they have like any interactions with you guys because you're so new um obviously my cousin I see um Hunter Yini came to Barcelona because Imola got cancelled so he's with Rod and Carlin so he came to watch us at Barcelona and support us um I met Theo Porsche one year when I was doing the girls on track rising stars and also Arthur Leclerc I met them too for when I did the girls on track rising stars but other than that I don't really know them. I know Ollie Behrman from Carton. I used to race with him in Carton. Um, other than that, I never, we don't really see the other people. Do you have like a driver you look up to? Uh, yeah, I think that would be my cousin Johnny. Um, I've That's always watched him like from his Carton days through F4 and F3. So, and he helps me a lot. So yeah, it would be him. Do you see yourself ever getting on the F3 grid and trying to race him? Um, I hope so one day. Um, <laughs> yeah, I hope We'll root so. for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> always. <laughs> we'll come girls got to support girls. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll show up with signs. And I mean, I know the F1 Academy is supposed to be this road to greatness in, F in the F1 and F2, F3 grid. What, obviously it's too early to tell maybe, but like, what is your main goal from F1 Academy and doing this program? Um, I think it's my main goal would just be to see what opportunities come from this. Obviously, F3 is quite expensive. So 
I will just have to see like what kind of opportunities I get from this whether that's now ending like my single seater career and going to like GTs maybe I'm not sure but we just have to see what opportunities come from F1 Academy. Would you ever think about something like Formula E or like one of those other sports? Um, I think I would prefer to go up the single seater ladder um, and then if that doesn't work out I would maybe try like the GT route or like endurance championship routes Um, and if like being a driver wouldn't really work out for me then I would like to be like a mechanic or an engineer in motorsport. So you have a lot of interest with the mechanics and the cars? Yeah I think when I was in karting I used to help a lot like help my mechanic quite a bit um and I I'm quite interested in like the mechanic inside of it I mean you're still young do you have like ideas or any plans of maybe going to school for mechanics or doing things like that and well I went to I just finished this year and I went to college which Uh was a motorsport course and we did like mechanicing as part of one of the courses that is so cool Um, so I have learned a little bit from that as well but it was on road cars rather than race cars so Mm -hmm. I would like maybe a bit of work experience on a race car but yeah imagine you see Jess designing the next F1 Academy race car that'd be amazing (laughs) incredible and you doing that course do you think even though it was on race road cars do you think it helped you in your racing in any way or not really um I think it didn't really it makes you understand the mechanical side a bit better but it's kind of irrelevant to like my car that I'm racing now um Mm -hmm. but my engineer does teach me quite a bit about like the setup and things so I've learned a lot with that this year um yeah is this engineer new to you with F1 Academy like have you met them before uh no I they're all new to me and the mechanics as well are all new to me. How are you liking the team? Yeah, they're all really friendly. Um, they're really good at what they do. Yeah, I really like it. And then I have to ask because I just like knowing, do you have like any like friendships going with the other racers? Like any like fun kind of girl hangouts? Because there's so many of you on the thing. I would imagine you guys are just constantly trying to support one another, even if you're in different teams. Yeah, we all get on well. We all speak. Um, we did a rounders game together on the beach at Zamfort, which I think will be on the highlights. Um, <laughs> I think that was really good. And I think all the girls get on really well. All the girls are friendly. So, yeah, but we all live a little bit too far away from each other. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. And then question for you. I know you only have two more rounds for the rest of the season or three. What do you hope for the rest of the season will bring you and the rest of the team? Um, I think for the rest of the season, I just want to get as many points as I can. We had like a tough start to the year, so I would really like to get some more podiums and some more points and see if I can move up the championship standings a bit. And then, I mean, outside of F1, and I know you do the horseback riding now. Do you have any other hobbies you're picking up with? No, I don't really have any other hobbies. Um, when I started racing like properly single seaters, we I kind of gave up with the horse riding because I just didn't have time. I don't have time to look after the horse, so it would never really work. Um, my cousin obviously still does horse riding, but other than that, I don't really do anything else. I just I'm either racing myself or watching my little brother live and breathe racing (laughs) yeah (laughs) do you still cart to this day or do you just do as like a fun hobby or do you just do f1 academy and so Um, me and my cousin do a couple of days like some not very often but in a gearbox cart um it's like good for your fitness and things and it's closer to like car race and then like a normal cart is so we do a little bit of that, not very often, because it's not very often we're at home at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we do try and get out for a bit of fun now and again. Have to take your that. breaks when you can get it. <laughs> it's going to be good to have someone like close to you that knows the same training that you have to do and can give you even more 
pointers than you already have, like that's got to be like really reassuring to like have that right there in your like backyard, basically when you're off. Yeah, it's really good. He's been through like everything I have before. So he's good at like he's raced on all the tracks as well. So he's really good with the advice he gives me. So you get a little extra bonus to your knowledge on tracks. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask because, I mean, honestly, we got through our questions pretty quickly. We really did. Mm-hmm. How are you liking the car that you have right now? Like, is there anything that you would want to change? Are you loving how you're feeling it on the track? Because, I mean, you guys are doing pretty well, even with the mishap this weekend. Um, yeah, I feel a lot more confident in the car than I did, like, at the start of the year. I think we have quite a good car underneath us so hopefully we can do some get some more good results we look forward to seeing what the rest of the year and season brings i know i'm so excited Roden yeah. and for f1 academy because you sure? are absolutely killing it when are you guys racing in coda um it's the 20 uh, it's when f1's on so the oh okay second yeah. or 23rd oh, right. i think of october yeah it's the same weekend i think it's it's, I know it's the third weekend of October because Austin in October is weekend one of ACL, weekend two of ACL, F1 weekend. Oh, is it wow. going to be laid out like how it was in Miami where in between like the F1, the Porsche they had Cup the Porsche going. races? Yeah. I think, oh, that'd be great. I think it is. I think it's going to be fun. There'll be a lot going on. It's going to be really yeah. cool for everyone in America to see F1 Academy in action. And I, I mean, for them. they're has been stuff written about that next year f1 academy will always be in support of f1 so always on the same weekend in the same location so it's only gonna get better from here guys and i feel like even for you jess that even just having it tied so closely to f1 and f2 and f3 will help you guys a lot in terms of exposure as well yeah, yeah, I think it'd be really good for getting everybody on like a proper global stage to get known. And you guys deserve it. There should be yeah, more 100%. concentration on women in F1, yeah. especially those trying to grow into the really high things like F1 and F2. The last woman that was in F1 was in the 70s, Layla Lombardi. Yeah, that was ages ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> decades <laughs> literally yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 50 years give or take honestly I think it would just be cool to have a woman put the stamp on motorsports higher up yeah um and just make it more known because it is a very male dominated sport which I get it but I do feel like seeing more of a woman exposure in the sport would honestly do it some good and then it just would be amazing just to see, be able to relate it back. Like they, they do that. Like they can do that. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like I growing we'll up, see, we, really. we had Danica Patrick and that's, that's, that's who yeah. we had growing up. Those are like yeah. the only female for us in the States mm-hmm. at least. Yeah, yeah. Like growing up in Europe, I don't think we had anyone. Don't think I so. I mean, Jess, can you think of any female drivers that you would maybe like think of? Um, I think Susie Wolf was quite good. Yeah, um, yeah she was an amazing yeah. she, she was amazing. And we all love Susie on this podcast. She's, yeah, <laughs> like Susie. <laughs> Susie's <laughs> queen. Have you gotten to interact with Susie? I know she works with the F1 Academy closely. Yeah, she always comes around to say hi every weekend that she's at our races. Yeah, she's really nice. That's, That's so awesome. cute. Does she get to make That's it so to nice. all the races then? <clears throat> um, she wasn't at Valencia I think because she was in Miami um oh yeah we saw her her. we saw her yeah but at least someone like Susie Wolf can bring good attention to it yeah Yeah. and bring in a lot of knowledge yeah yeah (laughs) yeah that woman is a force to be reckoned with I know F1 Academy has recently um partnered with Hello Sunshine um, oh yeah. Have y'all had any interaction with that or any preview to what the future will look like with Hello Sunshine? Um, not at the minute. They were at Paul Ricard official test. Um, yes, other yeah. than that, we haven't really. They were just taking some videos and things. Other than that, we haven't had 
any interactions with them at the minute. I think it could go well, though, considering who's in charge of Hello Sunshine. I think it's going to be fun. I like where the F1 Academy is going. I do wish we had more footage of you guys racing because yeah. I love following the... There is a really good thing that everyone kind of... Like the accounts for the sports and the teams, they are good at updating when people are done mm-hmm. on the podiums and how the races go. But there's just something I really want to see women driving on the track. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Just, neatly. just the sound of it. I just need to watch it, hear it, all of it. <laughs> need it. And like also going to the races too, like just to watch. Uh, yeah, I went, I haven't been this year, but we went to watch my cousin in Hockenheim a couple of years ago. Um, and that was when F1 was on. But other than that, I haven't been to watch any races. I imagine you don't have a lot of time. Yeah. Really. <laughs> <laughs> Do you spend a lot of your non like active racing time at the Carlin headquarters or do you mostly spend it at home what does your non-race weekends or weeks look like um when I'm not anywhere um I'll either be at Carlin on the sim or at home does um Rodin have a pretty prestigious like training regimen you go on as far as like do you have like a personal trainer all that to kind of make sure you stay at your fittest uh, yeah, I do have one, but it's not the one I train with at home isn't through Carlin. The one that we get from Carlin is like on an app where we do like he sets us like workouts on the app. Oh, OK. So everything's kind of online. Yeah. And then so do you have two trainers then, one with like Rod and one on your own? Yeah. OK, so what's your other trainer like? Is that one in person? Uh, yeah, I this I go to the gym with him um, when I'm at home. God, that sounds like a lot of working out. <laughs> <laughs> like I want it, but I don't. <laughs> yeah, Chelsea, she's an athlete. Come on, leave it to the professionals. <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed there. to work out today, and I was like, Nah, I'm just gonna lay down. <laughs> I bet you just already worked out today. <laughs> Twice, probably. <laughs> Is there anything else you like to do at home to relax when you're like not racing? Um, no, not really. No I was gonna ask if TV you were a... shows. Yeah, like yeah. Who's <laughs> watching on Netflix. <laughs> I don't, to be honest, I don't really watch that much telly. Oh, I really? get it. <laughs> yeah. Smart. Well, at least we can now say that we know Jess lives and breathes racing. He really we'll does. Anyone that says otherwise. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's not just the boys Proof. it's the girls too exactly absolutely I know you said you don't watch too much television um and you haven't been to a race in a couple years but is there any other motorsports outside of like f1 academy or f1 or f formula three that you like watch and love to see more of um yeah I go and watch my little brother and carton um other than that I don't really watch anything else how long has your brother been karting? Um, he started when he was three and he's 12 now. Wow. It's the average age if you want to start racing. That's basically you starting in toddlerhood. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. I have a three-year-old goddaughter and can't imagine like trying to see her do that. Although she has a lot of energy. I could, I feel like she would be very active and quick if... I wanted to put her in a car. I know I'm straight up going to start sending my friends stuff for my gods. I'm like, hey, let's do it. And especially because carts are fast. They're not that slow. They're faster than a road car most days. What's the fastest you've been able to go? Do you know? Yeah. Um, My car this year goes 140 mile an hour. (laughs) Have you gone to the top speed or have you not maxed out yet? Yeah, like at the end of pretty much every straight, you meet that speed, but the straights are so long and mm-hmm. it's so wide that you don't really feel like it's going that fast. Yeah, I was going to say, like, what does it feel like in the car when you're driving, like turns and all of that? How does that, do you feel any differences or is it just you kind of are so focused that you don't really feel the change? Um, I don't really feel the change. I think the track's, that we race on were made like wide for F1, so you don't really notice how fast you're going and things. 
cool. That's actually That's really cool. I love that. Did you your paddle? G-force get as high as theirs? Like, is, no. that, is that you're going to ask? Yeah. <laughs> right there. What I does your G-force like get one. to? Maybe really? like one. Really? Yeah, oh, really? really? Wow. So do y'all still train the neck pretty predominantly? I, yeah. Okay. Makes sense. <laughs> Those neck exercises fascinate me. They look like, yeah. so. They look like they're done in a medieval machine sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do they feel like? They do. Um, a bit strange. Um, yeah, it's a bit weird. <laughs> She's like, no, no one's, no one's ever asked me that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it looks like torture, so I gotta ask. Are but there any honestly, workouts you really like doing, or do you just kind of do them because you have to? But my prefer strength to run in, but every you have to do everything. So yeah, mm-hmm. I'm not a huge runner either. I don't like running. You literally ran last night. I know because I didn't have anything else to do. <laughs> <laughs> How long do your workouts go for? Um, maybe like an hour and a half. An hour to an hour and a half normally. And do you ever have those days where you're just like, I don't want to do this? Or do you just go, go, go and not even think about it? I just go and not think about it. <laughs> Damn. To have that... Jess's mindset. <laughs> yep. You... <laughs> The inspo we all needed this week. Must be very exhilarating, like when from race weekend to like the training and then the build up and then just getting it done and the accomplishment that comes with it. Sorry. How did it feel when you like first sat in the F1 Academy car? Like when you did your first test, how did you feel? Um, I was excited to get out in the car. Yeah. Uh, And I was, yeah, I was really excited to out for the first time in it because it had to have been a dream come true like you're literally getting into basically your dream car yeah <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> how did you find out was it like a call or an email um it was an email yeah oh my god a life-changing email <laughs> i love that do you still have the email i would save it <laughs> yeah i probably still have it yeah oh my god print it out and frame it I was going to say the same thing. (laughs) Like, how did the selection process work? Did you submit your name and then get picked or did they scout you? Um, We did a test with them and then they, I think a few people did a test and then they decided which ones they wanted. But you submitted your name for the test. Yeah, we asked if it would if we could do a test to see if we were good enough that's amazing and then the teams just chose their good their like favorite drivers yeah hmm, look at you <laughs> picked by a top team and the first one that's too amazing. like mm-hmm. yeah it's a good sign it's an amazing sign mm-hmm. only because i noticed that in f1 academy they do the car order number by like one two three four five whatever what number would you choose if you had a chance um i'd choose number 17 uh that Ooh. just because if i can choose my number that's what number i always use is there any tie to it or you just really like the number 17 um that's what my whole family is number 17 oh that is so oh, that's sweet, sweet. I know you had a pretty impressive start to your career in karting. Was there any highlights that you had that stood out while you were karting that you kind of like remember as like the holy grail when you won like that championship or that race? Um, I think probably when I won the first round of the British Championships in 2018 because it was so un- unexpected. Um, I definitely wasn't expecting to win and I did so. Yeah. Can I ask why you didn't expect it? Um, I think just because that was the first year I started doing British Championships. Um, and when I first joined the team Fusion, um, I wasn't particularly any good. Um, and they helped me a lot and came to, I joined them in 
like October and then it, the first round of the British Championships was in March and I won, but I definitely wasn't expecting it from where I came from. It's just a testament to how good you are because if you can turn that around pretty quickly from a rookie to winning your first race, wow. I mean, you're pretty good at turning around. You did it not that long ago. I think you went from like 12 to 4th, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, so, boring. Yeah. You can turn around just fine because <laughs> I thought that was <laughs> impressive. Yeah, yeah, you got this. If I remember reading that correctly, you had some good overtakes that actually um, were really good highlights from that race in general. Um, and I think you were the only one who like started from the bottom and then worked your way up. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. What's it like when you finish the races? I mean, do you just go back to the paddocks and go home? Do you do like the video watches or team meetings? Um, usually all three drivers and all three engineers, we have like a little debrief together of what we think. Um, and then we go through like the camera and the data to see where we can improve for the next one. Do you get to work strategies with your engineer or do you just kind of follow their lead? I can kind of choose whether I want a change or not. Um, he will decide what the change is, but if I feel I don't really want that change, then I can say, no, I'd rather not sort of thing. But usually he's right. So <laughs> leave it to the experts sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> And we just want to ask you, and this may be like a little bit of a crazy question, but it's kind of my signature per se <laughs> uh, to ask. Um, and feel free to not answer if you think it's a weird question. But if you were stuck on a deserted island with two drivers on the grid with you, who would you choose and why? Um, I think probably Abby and Megan, my teammates. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure why, just because they're my teammates. <laughs> you already work together. You have a thing going. You've got a flow. Mm -hmm. You already know them. <laughs> you know what it takes. Do you guys also like hang out when you're all down at Carlin or stuff like that? Or not really? Uh, yeah, me and Abby go to Carlin on the same days. Um, Megan works, so she struggles to get time off work to come down for them days. But when me and Abby are there both at the same time normally, so. That must be really cool. I mean, you're kind of getting to do yeah. this experience with a bunch of other female drivers that are also trying to get their dream. Jess, thank you yeah, so that. much for joining us. So We're so happy to have gotten the chance to speak with Jess today. And it has pumped us even more for the rest of the F1 Academy season. And from all of us at PGP, we want to say good luck in Monza because that will be your next race if anyone is uh, keeping tabs, which you should be. As always, don't forget to check us out on socials at Paddock Girls Podcast everywhere except for Twitter. There you'll find us at Paddock Girls Pod. And also follow Jess on her Instagram. Her handle is at underscore Jess Edgar underscore J-E-S-S-E-D-G-A-R. We're so glad to have you all with us for this extra special episode. Thanks for joining us in the paddock today. See you at the next race. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>